In this video, I'm going to be reviewing this ASP Micro TM160 Thermal Imaging Monocular from AGM and I'm going to start right now. Hello, my name is Jason and welcome to Best Binocular Reviews. You know, I've been on the lookout for a thermal imager for quite some time now not only to test and review here on BBR, but actually for my own personal use and interests. However, for a device that I consider to be slightly outside my core interests as it were, the price has for me to get your um, foot in the door at the entry level um, sort of position, but at the same time, be able to achieve a level of performance that I consider to be uh, more serious, has always been, you know, for me personally, just a little bit prohibitive. So up until fairly recently, I assume that the cheapest viable option out there, so by viable I mean one that will perform at a level that I would deem to be acceptable, was the well-known and indeed very well-respected Fleur Scout TK Thermal Vision Monocular, which to be sure is far less expensive than most thermal imaging devices out there, and indeed way less more expensive than their top-end thermal imaging binoculars. However, they would still have set me back a cool $600 or so. Which for me and my particular situation was still just a little bit on the pricey side. However, whilst researching for an article that I'm writing on binoculars from lesser known brands, I happened upon this monocular from AGM. Now, for those of you who know anything about the Fleur TK Scout, you'll interestingly recognize this device. Um, as bar a few uh, little details here and there, they look remarkably similar. And so this obviously uh, uh, piqued my interest somewhat. And, you know, what piqued it even more was when I noticed that the price was quite a lot different. I mean, you know, I think these are over $100 uh, less expensive than the Flow TK Scout. Now, with that interest came a whole bunch of skepticism because straight away I assumed, I thought to my, I started thinking to myself, hmm, what's different between this and the Flow TK Scout? So, um, doing what I do, I started comparing the specifications and, and stats and things like that. Now, yes, there are differences and I'll get through to all those in the, the full review. But having said that, the differences looked to me to be quite minor. And so, and, and indeed, some of them were in the positive side for, for this device. So I immediately, um, my interest went to a level where I thought, okay, I want to get it. Um, I contact the guys at AGM. They, and to cut a long story short, because I'm going too off topic here, they sent me a, a sample. And after a, a, over now a month of testing, I finally feel I have um, enough experience to be able to pass on uh, my thoughts and opinions. Um, in this mini review. Now, just a quick disclaimer or, or something for the full review, which contains way, way more information than I can possibly include in a video like this, because as you know, I ramble a bit, it'll go on forever. On top of that, there's um, graphs and tables and things that I, I just can't include um, in a video, or well, not very easily, um, and, and it'll just get too long. So for the full review um, and the comparisons um, in detail compared to um, other devices like this on the market, including the Fleur TK Scout, please be sure to check out the link down in the description below. This video is going to contain the highlights from that review, uh, my thoughts, my main thoughts and opinions, and the, the general things that stand out, both positive and negative. So without further ado, let's get started. So here, I think I could go on about how the AGM ASP Micro has a liquid crystal on silicon display with a resolution of 720 by 540 pixels, which is slightly higher than the LCD display that the Fleur Scout has, which is only 640 by 480 resolution. And I could mention the things like the sensor heat sensor arrays are quite similar. But I think um, all that sort of terminology and technology um, gets really, really complicated. And um, I'm going to leave that for the full review. Once again, I won't harp on about it too much. Well, try not. It's the links are down below. You can read all about that in the full review. But for this video review, I just wanted to include some sample footage that I captured with the AGM, as I think it gives you a far better visual idea of what you can expect when both recording with this device, as well as looking through it, as I think the image quality that you see when looking through the display quite closely matches the recorded um, quality video, uh, video quality. Also, just to point out, I do actually have a separate video that contains um, just a recorded sample footage. I would urge you to view that in conjunction with this review just because it contains quite a lot of detail in regards to the different palettes that can be used on on this device and how it affects the view and how it could 
um, suit different types of situations as well as environmental conditions. On top of that, I take a look at, um, for instance, looking at how it works during the day versus at night. Quick spoiler alert, yeah, it's quite similar. And on top of that, also take a look at what you could expect at different distances and when viewing different types of objects. So yeah, that, that video you can find on this channel. Also, it will be embedded on the full review on the BBR website. As I mentioned earlier, the design of the AGM ASP Micro is very similar to that of the tried and tested Fleur Scout, which is a good thing, as I found it comfortable to hold and very easy to operate with just one hand. The positioning, and as importantly, the spacing between the four main buttons on the top of the device is good and makes them all very easy to use and more importantly, find without having to look. When using the thermal imager in the dark, this is obviously an especially important feature. One point I would like to add is that whilst it was perfectly fine when I was using it with my bare hands, I would have preferred the buttons to protrude out just a little bit more so as to make them a little bit easier to locate whilst I was wearing my thick winter gloves. Now one of the biggest advantages a monocular like this has over a thermal imaging binocular is that it is far smaller and thus easier to carry about. Indeed, the ease of use was for me one of the main highlights of the TM160. I would just pop it into my jacket pocket and off I would go. I can't wait to take it with me on my next camping trip or on safari, where not only is it small enough to easily pack away in just about any size bag, but once at my destination, it is small enough to carry about just about wherever I go. I can already imagine myself using it at a particular hide that I know of that overlooks a waterhole where you're allowed to camp overnight. As well as the size advantage, a monocular is also easier and cheaper to make and there are far fewer parts to worry about. And thus, if you're looking for an affordable thermal imaging option, a night vision device, or indeed standard daytime optics, a monocular is often the way to go. However, do remember that on the downside, you also get a less immersive experience when only using one eye to view an image, when compared to using two with a binocular or indeed a biocular. On the underside of the body is a threaded insert which can be used to easily mount the monocular onto a tripod. Here it is important to mention that the insert is metal which is obviously preferable over the plastic ones that I sometimes come across on other similar types of devices. Being able to mount the ASP Micro onto a tripod is good for a number of reasons. Firstly it allows you to more easily train the view onto a single spot and thus share your view with someone else. On top of that when recording, it ensures that you get a much steadier image. And then thirdly, the ASP Micro allows you to connect to it via Wi-Fi and using an app either installed on your phone or iPad, for example. Now, using this um, app and connectivity in conjunction with mounting the monocular onto a tripod is extremely useful in a wide variety of situations. So for example, you could leave it in a position where you don't want to be, be that for because of security reasons, for example, or perhaps just because it's freezing cold outside, like I did on a number of occasions. Or you could set it up mounted onto a tripod in a location where you just know timid wildlife is going to frequent, whereby you can view and operate it remotely. Related to setting it up remotely and leaving it is another important feature I think is worth stressing here, and that is the fact that ASP Micro has an IPX67 rating, meaning that they have seals that are completely dust tight, and on top of that, they are able to sit in water for up to 30 minutes at a depth of one meter without any water getting inside. Another small part of the ASP Micro that I really liked was the design and makeup of the rounded eye cup. Made from a soft, pliable rubber, it molds to the shape of your face around the eye, and thus it's not only comfortable to use, but also does an excellent job of blocking out any extraneous light or distractions from the periphery of your view. In terms of power, this thermal monocular has a built-in rechargeable lithium battery, so no messing about with buying batteries and the such, which I like. It is recharged via the USB port on the underside that is also used for transferring videos and photos. AGM says that the lifespan is about 10 hours of continuous running, which now that I've used it for quite a bit, I would say it's just about right. Although I tend to use it for relatively short periods of time and then take it back to my computer to download videos and images, and thus it's getting recharged all the time. However, if you wanted to leave it overnight, um, then a 10 hour lifespan may be a little bit short, especially when you consider that when you turn on the Wi-Fi, it'll actually reduce the battery life even further. In this case, I guess perhaps you could get an extension uh, for the USB cord and thus power it remotely. 
Unlike most recording devices that will use a memory card, the AGM ASP Micro only has built-in memory, the capacity of which is 8 gigabytes, which if you're a videographer may not sound like much in this modern age. However, considering at um, the resolution that it records at, it is actually quite a lot. So in some ways, I do like the simplicity of this, but at the same time, it would also have been nice to be able to increase the capacity or just take out the card to download images and video instead of having to use the USB cable. Also, just to mention, if storage capacity is a problem for you, there is a way around it because you could always connect it to your phone using the app and then record directly onto your phone and thus you'd be using the memory card on your phone and not the one on the actual device itself. As well as the device itself, when you open up the box, you will also find an included wrist strap, a cleaning cloth, and the USB cable needed to connect the AGM ASP Micro to your computer. However, what is not included is a carry case. Now, whilst I do think this is a slight shame, to keep costs down, I can fully understand why. I also found that with its form-fitting sponge foam insert, the box is perfect for long-term storage, and I do feel that the monocular is tough enough just to be packed in with your clothing on trips away. And then when out in the field, I would just carry it using the wrist strap and or put it in my jacket pocket. So the lack of a carry case for me wasn't really a deal breaker. AGM also includes an objective lens cover, which I found worked well enough, but was just a little bit too flimsy and came away from the device just a little bit too easily. A good aspect to the cover, however, is that it is tethered to the body and thus just hangs under it when you remove it from the lens. This worked well and was easy to find and obviously replace in the dark and it also ensured that it never ended up being lost or replaced as a result of coming away by accident. Small, lightweight, easy to use, low cost thermal imaging monocular that punches well above its price tag. In a sentence, this is how I would describe the AGM ASP Micro TM160. But in reality, I feel it's far more than that Indeed, for me personally, I would describe it as a true game changer and it has now been added to my must-have pieces of gear for use both around the home like viewing critters and pets in the garden at night as well as helping out with security. On top of this, from now on, it's most certainly going to be one of the first instruments I reach for and put into my bag on just about any outdoor nature wildlife adventure where I'll be spending the night. Before having this chance to test the ASP Micro, I was never totally sure if I actually really needed a thermal imaging device and I was worried that it would be more of a novelty and, than a useful device and that I would take it out only a few times and then never use it again. This I guess is one of the main reasons why up until now I have always thought for me that the price tag to get into thermal vision was just a little bit too much. However, now that I have had time to use one, I have to say that whilst thermal imaging does have its drawbacks, it has probably become my favorite form of night vision for how and what I use night vision most for, mostly for, and that is viewing warm-blooded mammals. Other ideal uses for this device include home security as well as search and rescue. Here I think professional search and rescue teams will probably have the budget for higher specification devices, but as something to take out with you on any sort of outing into the wild, be that camping, hiking, skiing, where someone could potentially get lost, Devices like this AGM ASP Micro would certainly be of use if a certain rescue operation had to be undertaken in an emergency. Prepping, yes, most certainly. If you have the budget, the fact that it is so small and lightweight and thus easy to pack into just about any bug out or get home bag, having a device like this ASP Micro on you is a no brainer. Where a thermal imager like this is not so good is for things like viewing uh, cold-blooded animals, for example, or any sort of uh, object that doesn't um, stand out in terms of its heat signature compared to its environment. Also, um, so for example, another a thought that I have here is stargazing. Um, whilst traditional um, night vision you are great for viewing um, stars with, this device, um, the stars in the sky are actually invisible to it because they just don't give enough heat or for it to be detectable by this device. Another uh, shortcoming, I guess you could call it, is the image resolution. Be that for photos or videos, it is very low when you compare it to that what we have become accustomed to when using a daytime camera or even a standard night vision, digital night vision device. And thus, I don't think it would uh, make, uh, you should consider it as a device for um, anything other than identification purposes. I mean, you're not going to take uh, beautiful photographs with this. So in an ideal world, you would have both um, a thermal imager as well as standard night vision. 
However, if like most people you don't have the budget for both, then which you choose will largely depend on your own particular circumstances and what exactly you want to use the device for, as both have their relative strengths and weaknesses. Right, so there you go. As I said at the start of the video, for the full review, that goes into way more detail than I can possibly include in a video like this. Please be sure to check out the link in the description below that will take you through to the BBR website. So other than that to say, if you did like this video, please do remember to give us a thumbs up. And if at all possible, and if you wanna see um, future content like this, please do remember to subscribe and hit that little bell button and all that other stuff that YouTubers say. You know, I really do appreciate this and I'm sure other small channels like mine appreciate it as well because um, whilst it may seem like a small thing, um, these do really help the uh, YouTube algorithm and help little channels like this um, sort of climb the rankings and hopefully bring you more content of what you wanna see. Other than that, uh, if you have any comments, thoughts, opinions, or ideas for future videos or whatever, um, just feel free to use the section comment section down below and I'll do my real best to get back to you. So I'm gonna leave it there for now and say thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Cheers for now.